Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. Uh, my name's Andy, my channel is Finding Value. I'm gonna answer a question or at least answer a question that's in the comment section. Uh, I'll go straight into it here and give you my opinion. It says, uh, so you take two unrelated instruments, smash them up, come up with a ratio, and then invest off them. And this is considered value, smart investing. You, me, everyone basically has no idea, but you're fooling yourself by overanalyzing. That, that this is a viable system and you know what you're doing with ratios. I only understand simple stuff, price. Either it moves up or down. I respect prices and trade accordingly, but, but ratio investing is whack. You can't explain why the ratio is correlated. After this, you need to create a theory story why one affects the others. It sounds good, probable, but it is complete junk and baseless. It's, cur it's like curve fitting. Once you subscribe to this ratio, well then you better ride it to the end and hoping for the ratio fairy to come save you. This is akin to voodoo investment. Well, I don't think it's necessarily voodoo investment. Uh, so my question back to you is, um, how would you solve if a car was expensive or cheap in 1950? How would you know if it was expensive or cheap? If you pay, I'll just make up a number, $2,000. Is that expensive or cheap in 1950? And what exactly would you do to identify if that was expensive or cheap? $2,000. Oh, well, I would adjust it to the consumer price index. Consumer price index is made up. So that's not a viable way to identify what the value or the price of that car was, the value of that car in relationship to other things. Everything in life is relative. Everything. Well, if everything in life is relative, but why is it relative? Why is everything in life relative? If money comes into the system, it seeks assets. Where did that money go? Well, I don't care. I just go off of price. Well, price doesn't tell you anything. If the price of everything goes up, did you make purchasing power gains? No, you can't even identify if you make purchasing power gains, can you? The only way that you can do it is on a relative basis. Everything in life is based off of relativity. Even the price that you are de describing is based off of relativity. Price is priced in dollars. That is a ratio. It's your asset priced in, in, in dollars. That is a ratio. Everything you price in is in ratios. Everything. Dollars per ounce, dollars per pound. And then you have some sort of asset priced in dollars. It's a ratio. It's given per dollars. We have a price to earnings ratio. Is that, is that whack? Is that ratio whack? Price to book ratio? Is that whack? Is every single, every single metric we use is a ratio. So you're saying that everything that we use is is whack. It's voodoo investment. He uses price. That's a ratio. Whack. <laughs> it's all relative, guys. Where you, what you need to do, assets go up because of liquidity, because of money flows. And what you need to identify is where is the money at? How do you identify where the money is at? How do you identify that? You have to use a ratio. You have to do an asset versus an asset compared to time. Then you can identify what's expensive and what's cheap. That is how you make money, period. Everyone else just getting lucky. They're just getting lucky or they're in a company that, that grows. And that's fine. You can do that. You can buy companies that grow and, and there's nothing wrong with that. You can make money that way and they grow faster than the rate of everything else, than the money supply coming into the system. If liquidity is coming into the system, you can't identify where the value is given just price. It's a meaningless number. A meaningless number to know that Oil's priced at twenty dollars. Is that expensive or cheap? You're going to say, "Oh, that's super cheap." Well, what about oil in 1910 at twenty or thirty dollars? Is that expensive or cheap? Oh, it's expensive. Well, I just put, why is it expensive? Because it's expensive relative to everything else. But twenty dollar barrel oil today is cheap. How do we know that? Price doesn't tell you value. Doesn't tell you anything. You have to look at it in relationship to something else. It's actually quite genius. <laughs> it's, that's the only way that you can actually make money and identify where value is in any system. That's the only way. There is no other way. If I said oil at $100 is expensive or cheap, well, what's the price of everything else? That's, then it's a ratio. You're comparing. You're doing uh, a, comp a, a comparative analysis between multiple assets. A ratio is just cutting straight to where, what we can identify on a historical basis if something's cheap or expensive, given the parameters of time. And 
those parameters, uh, an upper level ratio will tell you what the psychological threshold is of that price in a given market condition. Uh, ratios also tell you market conditions. They tell you where the money's at, how the money's flowing. They tell you what the market conditions are. And what does that mean? If oil is incredibly expensive and has a very high ratio, we're in an inflationary environment. I don't even need, I don't even need to know anything else. It is inflation. If you have a, a oil to gold ratio that's falling, we're in an inflationary environment. That oil is taking a larger share of the money when you price oil against other assets and oil is outperforming those other assets. When platinum outperforms gold, inflationary environment. That's just based off of history. So ratios actually tell you more about market conditions than you than than are than people just saying things. It's a it's a way to objectively have an opinion or a, to objectively identify something as a fact. This ratio is moving this. This ratio is moving this. And when when these two are combined, every time in history, we've had an inflationary environment. When these ratios move in certain ways. <clears throat> So it's actually something that tells you, uh, it basically cuts through all of the garbage, all of the opinions. You don't need these opinions. You can just go straight to ratio and say, okay, this is where we're at. This is where we're at. This is where we're at. And I could probably tell you just based off ratios of a whole bunch of different ratios uh, and how they're moving against each other, what the likelihood is that, of what's to come. There's no voodoo in it. There's no... Uh, anything. And in fact, it's probably the most reliable way to make copious amounts of money with the least amount of risk because it's identifying risk too. During history, you can say that the lows are roughly here. That's the psychological threshold points of where people buy things or things get substituted out historically. So if palladium goes expensive and platinum's cheap, they can substitute those two things. There's a whole bunch of, of, of things integrated into the ratio um, by it's basically integrated all into it, saying that substitutions would happen given ratios hitting certain parameters uh, over history. Sure, things can change. Yes, they can go cheaper. Yes, they can go more expensive to some degree. To some degree. <clears throat> Stocks have never been more expensive in relationship to commodities, ever. Why is that? Well, we were just in the lowest interest rate environment ever. Those two things are perfectly correlated. What happens when interest rates go up? Well, stock prices go down. And what do we have today? Stock prices are going down in relationship to commodities. Why is that? The interest rates. Why are interest rates going up? Inflation. Why is inflation going up? The ratios tell us everything. You don't have to speculate. <clears throat> now, we just have to hold on and things are going to get bumpy along the way. That's, that's the way you know investing is. But nothing's whack. and it's just a way to tell the relative value of, of, of assets against each other. And you can do ratios of anything. doesn't necessarily matter. Sometimes they mean something, sometimes they don't. But yeah, that's what, uh, that's what I use. And if you guys don't like it, that's fine. If you don't have to subscribe to it, you can go to another channel and uh, use whatever they use. Uh, you can you can rub, rub a couple of sticks together and and hope and pray that your investments work, but uh, ratios have been the most reliable thing that I've that I've found in history of any other metric. Market conditions are probably second, and that's just when the ratios turn of, of where of how liquidity gets distributed amongst assets and how liquidity flows between them. And then technical analysis is just a way to, to try to validate all that and try to time purchases. Technical analysis is probably the least important with ratios being the most important. So uh, that's what I've got for today, guys. Um, I just wanted to comment on that. Uh, if you guys want to learn more about ratios and market conditions and all those stuff, we've got the platinum membership in the, of the website below. Uh, you, can, you can sign up there, I get a platinum membership, and I go over stocks and all other sorts of things. Um, if you guys like this analysis, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you like, if you like these videos. We'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.